Start Select, Pre-Select, Auto Shift, Auto Shift Pro. It all sounds very complicated, but in reality, it's all quite simple. So today, let's talk about Smart Shift and the Pinion MGU. With me today is Niklas from Pinions Product Management. Niklas, SmartShift isn't just confined to the MGU, is it? Exactly. We at Pinion, we not only produce the MGU, we produce also gearboxes for bikes and pedelecs. And for these gearboxes, we also offer an electrical shifting variant. And with this variant, we have also SmartShift, but the function is slightly different from the MGU. And that's why today we're concentrating on SmartShift just in context with the MGU, correct? Absolutely. What does SmartShift actually mean? What does it entail? What does it include? With the MGU, we shift always electrically. We shift while riding, in standstill, and also on a load. And with SmartShift, we offer three features. That's Start Select, Pre-Select, and New Auto Shift. Start Select. What is it? Start Select is our basic feature actually. It helps you and assists you um, when you come to a st standstill. You, the MGU is shifting to a predefined or pre selected gear. This means, for example, when I stop at a red light, the MGU is shifting into your pre selected gear. Okay, so no more setting off in the wrong gear and kind of being awkward in front of the other cars and riders? Absolutely. When using the Start Select feature, you may be recognized that the gear is slightly delayed enabled when you stop. But this is done by purpose. So the second function we mentioned is pre-select. What can I expect from pre-select? What does it do? It's a half automatic function, correct? Exactly. Um, the pre-select is our semi-automatic feature. It assists you while you're coasting, it always shifting the right gear to your actual speed and your pre-selected target cadence. Okay, can you elaborate a little bit more on what cadence means? Uh, cadence um, is your pedal rotation per minute. And when you're not familiar with the, with the value and you do not know what your, R, what your preferred cadence is actually, um, we recognize, recommend to use uh, 60 to 70, 75 um, as, a, as a start value for the feature. And with using the, the function, you will maybe adjust it um, a little bit more to your needs. So when I'm coasting downhill and, I'm, uh, and I reach another hill, I'll already be in the perfect gear to set off, correct? Absolutely. It doesn't matter if you are going downhill on a trail and you're coasting um, and you maybe decelerate a little bit um, or if you accelerate uh, with going downhill, the system will always shift into right gear. It doesn't matter if it is shifting up or is shifting down. You will always have the right gear when you start pedaling again. But that's only when coasting. Auto shift in contrast also shifts while I'm pedaling. Yes, absolutely. Auto shift is our new function and it is a full automatic. There's two variants of auto shift. There's auto shift and auto shift pro. Could you elaborate on what auto shift is and how it differs from auto shift pro? Auto shift pro is defined more or developed more towards the use of an EMTP, for example, where you have more dynamic situations, um, more range and target cadence what you are um, what you are riding with the bike. And auto shift, on the other hand, uh, without the pro, is more geared towards urban commuting touring applications. Yes, absolutely. Can you elaborate on on how that works? With the with the auto shift, we um, when you enable the auto shift, you will press and hold the small button on the trigger, and you will therefore activate it. And then the trigger becomes your target selector. This means when I'm pressing now the button on the trigger, I will not do an instant shift on the gearbox. Um, I, I select a new target cadence and this system will adjust my pre-select or my, my, my target cadence to a new value. Okay, so that's, that's helpful, I guess, when you, uh, especially when you come up towards a sudden incline, for example, because I personally, I always tend to increase my cadence as soon as I hit a hill compared to just coasting along um, in the flats. Correct. Usually people are going in the flat a little bit less cadence, so maybe a 60 cadence, but as soon as you come to a hill, usually people increase their cadence, um, even when they are not aware of it, but they do it. And you can adjust that very easy with selecting a new target cadence, go to 70, 75, for example, and the system will increase your cadence, therefore. 
And that means that the bike from then on always shifts according to my cadence to keep me in the optimal band of what I'm pedaling and keeping my speed. Yes, absolutely. Can you give me an example of how you would use AutoShift Pro? Yes, um, of course. For example, for the AutoShift Pro version, when you go on a mountain bike tour, for example, you start very relaxed with a 60 cadence, for example, riding on the flat towards your trails, and then reaching the trail in the first uphill, um, you, want to, you want to go to a higher cadence, and therefore do a shift or two or three, whatever, to, to reach your preferred cadence, what, where you feel good and natural on it and the system will keep you in this new target cadence. That's a very special feature compared to other systems. It is not limited by time. It will totally adjust to your needs. So if I want to get rid of that adaptive cadence and kind of go for a reset, I can do that on the fly as well, right? Yes, exactly. Um, you can do it in, um, for reducing the cadence, do another shift or two, or you can use the reset function we implemented. Um, and therefore, you press and hold the, the bigger trigger button for two seconds, and the system will go into the cadence you have adjusted in your settings. But this entire system, Auto Shift and Auto Shift Pro, it's all reactive. It's not predictive shifting, correct? Absolutely. It's very important to say the system is not able to see ahead and it's not able to feel what you want from the, from the system. It is only reacting on now, on the situation, what's happening now. This means if you are going, for example, for an obstacle, um, like, a, like a steep incline, very steep incline, um, maybe it's better to deactivate the automatic for this situation and running in manual mode because let me, let me explain it to you by, um, with this example, with this steep incline. When you're going to this, to this ramp, um, usually you increase your speed, you increase the cadence and you're running into this ramp. The automatic will only see the cadence is going up, the speed is going up, so I shift in a, in a bigger gear and you will stuck in that incline. And that's the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. Absolutely. And therefore, just deactivate for this amount of time the automatic, go over the obstacle, go over the ramp, and then you can use the automatic again. So the human still has the full control with, uh, with this system, but you need to kind of feel how it works and what works for you. How, like what percentage would you say do you use Auto Shift or Auto Shift Pro or any of those functions on a normal ride and when do you go and ride it normal without any of the electronic aids? So when I'm going for a mountain bike ride, for example, I would say I can use Automatic or AutoShift Pro in 80% of my tour. Um, I use it very dynamic, so I do a multiple shifts manually. I overrule the system a lot, um, but only in that time where I need it. And uh, for the rest of the time, I'm using the full convenience of the automatic shifting. This is also possible on the trail. It is possible in the city, everywhere, actually. It gives you a lot of room. And in contrast, when you're on a tour or you're commuting to work, it's nice to fall back on auto shift and just let the bike do it for you. Absolutely. Um, auto shift is the easier use of the, of the system. It's more towards design for, uh, for city urban applications. For comfort. Come for not that dynamic situations. Um, and you have the possibility to always see the target cadence in the display. Um, it, it is very easy to use. Can you show me how to access all these different functions on the bike? Yes, of course. Let's do it here on this bike with the display compact and the remote basic. To adjust the smart shift features, I will go to the menu, go to gear, smart shift, and here I can adjust the features start select, pre-select and auto shift. With start select, I can activate the function and select my start gear. In pre-select, I can activate the feature and then also define the gear, the minimum gear, which should be enabled by pre-select. And I can also adjust my target cadence. To activate auto shift, I will press and hold the front trigger button for two seconds. And the display will show me an A, which means auto shift is activated. When I now press the trigger buttons, I will adjust my target cadence on the system in both directions. 
With auto shift, I have the possibility to activate auto shift. Road. I have the starting gear and um, as in the pre-select feature, I can adjust the gear and also the cadence. And the starting gear in this situation is uh, for stopping so that I don't set off in too low of a gear after coming to a slow halt. Absolutely. But it's important to know the auto shift will always go into lower gears while I keep on pedaling. When I'm rolling to a corner, for example, and, and reducing my speed, but I have enabled the fifth gear, for example, as a start gear, the auto shift will not shift below the fifth gear while I'm rolling, coasting. When I'm going uphill, the auto shift will go directly into lower gears when I'm pedaling. I press and hold the front trigger button for two seconds. And the system is showing now the A+. This means Auto Shift Pro is activated. When I now press a trigger button, it will do an instant shift in both directions. And after the gear, it will show the new target cadence. In addition to Auto Shift and Auto Shift Pro, with the most recent update this summer, there's also been an update to the overrun functionality of the MGU. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yes, absolutely. Um, with the launch of the MGU, we didn't have any overrun. This means when I'm stop pedaling, the motor stops immediately. Um, this is not bad, but uh, at some uh, situations, it helps you when a motor is pushing you a little bit more. This is also for uh, city and tracking applications, but also for mountain bike applications. For mountain bike applications, it helps you to go over smaller obstacles, for example, where the bike is pushing you a little bit. So I don't get hung up with the pedals because I need to keep pedaling to keep the bike moving. Absolutely. But it's not that much that it um, is, is not good for, for city or tracking applications. With a CPM tracking application, it makes it more, um, more natural riding. Smooth. More smooth, yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Niklas. That was really, really informative. Now, we've been talking a lot of theory, but nothing beats practice. So, why not go up to your local bike shop and ask for a test ride? Trust me, you won't regret it. And it's something completely different feeling the system than just having two guys talking to you about the system. If you've liked this video, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to see more videos or you have any questions, please comment, give us a like, and thank you very much.